Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, and we're going to talk about aspects of horror, um, and we're going to talk about aspects of loneliness, and how we depict the power of loneliness, the impact of loneliness on a human being in non-player characters, um, and how we weave that specific um, aspect of our humanity about, you know, the dangers of loneliness for a human being um, into the horror aspects of Dungeons and Dragons. All right, so let's get into this. So first of all, let's just talk about horror for a minute and Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons has a history of one. I, I think Dungeons and Dragons is it's just so incredibly powerful, and it, and it is really hitting its stride now. Just continuing to you know to level up. We we got this huge blockbuster film coming up in 2023, but people are coming to it and they're. They're excited and they're happy to find what they find in Dungeons and Dragons. Of course, there's some problems with you know with introducing new players to Dungeons and Dragons. We're going to be dealing we're going to be dealing with that as we as we have a large number of people already starting to come in um, from from the new Dungeons and Dragons 2023 film, right? Um, but one of the things that I think why Dungeons and Dragons continues to just absolutely uh, destroy its competition um, is uh, this this aspect of it it's speaking to uh, there's a cycle in in my opinion it, there's just a circle of D and D IRL D and D IRL D and D D and D to IRL to to D and D to IRL to D and D to IRL and I I think Gary started this right like he you know there were aspects of his in real life experiences that are included in Dungeons and Dragons and then he he. You know, he interacted with Dungeons and Dragons and allowed Dungeons and Dragons to make his life better, right? And and to increase, to increasingly improve himself through you know through the rest of his life, uh, through his interactions with Dungeons and Dragons, right? So, part of what makes Dungeons and Dragons so great is this aspect of horror, right? Horror has always been in Dungeons and Dragons. Um, actually, I shouldn't say always. Uh, really, it really dropped with Ravenloft. Right, that's that's where they're like, hey, horror is part of Dungeons and Dragons, so horror is an important genre. So let's talk about. Uh, so what I want to talk about today is I want to talk about um, the new television series, the 2022 television series Blackbird. Uh, spoilers for 2022 Blackbird in this material. 2022 Black um, Blackbird is a story. It's a true crime story. No, actually, it's a crime story that was in, inspired by true events, right? And it it is one of the most powerful um, television series I've ever seen, and certainly one of the best um, true. I'm going to say true crime here. It, it actually inspired by, you know, um, it's inspired by a true story. Okay, so it's one of the most impactful true crime stories I've ever I've ever seen on the small screen. It's absolutely incredible. So I, I I'm finishing out my uh, a three month free period on Apple TV, which I have loved. There's amazing stuff on Apple TV. Uh, if you have access to, to get a free three-month trial the way I did, you should do it. There's some amazing stuff on there. And this, I, I blasted through this six-episode series. It was absolutely incredible. So it starred um, Taron Edgerton um, as, a, as, a, as a Coke dealer. Uh, as His character was a Coke dealer who gets put in prison. And then um, it also stars Paul... David Hauser, Paul David Hauser. Absolutely, the 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 entire show rests on um, on the work of Paul David Hauser. The, this show, the way it's constructed, is if Paul David Hauser doesn't do his job, um, this doesn't work, right? And this show just slaps, man. This thing is incredible, right? It, it is, it is absolutely incredible. Um, so so basically. Uh, this, here's the story. So the story is um, Taron Edgerton, char- his character is is just a, a drug dealer, a co- cocaine drug drug dealer in the late '90s who gets put in prison. Uh, Paul David Hauser is a straight up serial killer, right? Uh, and boy, is he like an incredibly dangerous human being. So he's this uh, you know very tubby, fat you know human, uh, very tubby, fat. Um, you, uh, male, right? Who is cis male who 
very much wants a relationship with a woman, right? But just the entire construct of his life. So basically, his father was a was a grave digger, right? And um, so his father, when he when when Paul David Hauser's character, the serial killer, uh, this deep South serial killer, uh, basically he his father was a grave digger and would wake him up at 10 in the mo- uh, wake him up when he was 10 years old and started this and would drag him out um in like at 2 a.m and have him dig graves for four hours and do half of his work right and then take him home before the day started and start the day you know with half his work done by his son his you know so this is a 10 year old who you're having dig graves like literally put dirt over a dead body, right? And his dad would have him open up the caskets and deal directly with the bodies to steal their rings and all the stuff, you know, that was on them, right? His dad was a grave robber and a grave digger, right? And so the first thing is this this Paul David Hauser's character, he's completely broken by his father. He just is put in this horrific space where no no 10-year-old should have to ever touch a dead body. That's, you know, that's outlandishly cruel, right? And so you have this situation where he, you know, he really cannot, um, so this guy is broken from the start, right? And then, um, in, in addition to that, uh, he then becomes a janitor, right? So this, the serial killer, he, he desperately wants to just have a girlfriend and, you know, and, and, and this, this is the part that I, I just was, this is the whole reason I'm doing this video, right? There's a part where Taron Edgerton is talking to this guy. And Taron Edgerton's character is sent into prison. So, so they, <laughs> the story is amazing. So basically, Paul Paul David Hauser's character, the serial so the serial killer, he kills 14 women, right? 14 women, and buries their bodies, right? And he does an insanely good job of burying their bodies. Because, um, because he he was a grave digger and he's a janitor, right? So he knows how to get rid of stuff, right? So they they catch him for one of these they catch him for one of these murders, but they can't they can't find any of the graves, right? They and he has a two month period before his his um, his case comes up, and they don't have the evidence they need to hold him right to and they think that he's going to get released once his case goes up right so they so the FBI sends in sends in a um specifically sends in a uh, a prisoner the cocaine dealer who's played by Taron Edgerton to get Paul David Hauser's to get the serial killer to admit just one location for one of the graves right now in the end uh, the serial killer shows, um, actually, so the cocaine dealer befriends him and he, and the serial killer literally shows him a map of all the graves, right? And that's how the, and, and then the cocaine dealer's, um, 10 year sentence is commuted, right? And he's let free, right? Just because, and, and then the uh, serial killer is kept in prison for the rest of his life, Right. Uh, incredible story, right? But what really blew me away was there's a part where Paul David Hauser says, is talking, so the serial killer is talking to the cocaine dealer, and he says, um, you know, he says, I, I see all these people, right? I see all these guys, I see all these guys, and they, they get to the point where they have a woman who wants to spend time with them together, wants to spend time with them, wants to spend time together, and they go to movies together, and they eat pizza together, and the way Paul David Hauser delivers this line, he's a serial killer, right, but you're like, he's just a human who is trying to connect with someone else, right, and he never was able to connect, because every woman he came across was like, there's something deeply wrong with this person, and so he, he was alone, and he was always alone. And he never had a single person in his life who really looked out for him and cared for him, right? And it made him into an absolutely horrific 
monster worse than anything you will find in the monster manual, right? And so as we move forward with Dungeons and Dragons and we're crafting these horror stories, right? First of all, we have a responsibility, right? We we are, you know, if you're listening to this channel, you're attempting to accomplish things with your Dungeons and Dragons game. You're not attempting to entertain anyone or have fun. You're attempting to accomplish IRL tasks with Dungeons and Dragons. That 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 and that's that's what interests me with 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 Dungeons and Dragons. In my humble opinion, because of how Dungeons and Dragons tell story, which is different than any narrative engine that's ever existed in humanity. Dungeons and Dragons can accomplish IRL goals, and it's it's really critically important, and uh, and it's 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 the most important thing about Dungeons and Dragons. It can, it can accomplish IRL goals, right? And in, in my humble opinion, in my humble opinion, and so because of that, we don't have the time to rewatch you know silly stuff. We don't have the time to watch uh, you know reality tele TV show. We need to watch the best narrative stories there are, and then. Leap and then stand on those narrative creators' shoulders and leap up, right? And, you know, to grab, you know, ladders that are in the sky, you know, so that we we are looking to pull narrative way, way up. I believe that's exactly what Gary Gygax did. He catapulted narrative um, far beyond any human had has ever done. I genuinely, Gary Gygax left Shakespeare in the dust. Right, like. Shakespeare accomplished nothing compared to Gary Gygax, in my humble opinion. So we have to delve into these, and this is right on the interaction. Like, there's combat, there's interaction, there's exploration. Nothing you're going to watch is going to be more powerful on understanding interaction in the horror genre in Dungeons & Dragons than Blackbird. It will unlock 100 questions in your head, and if you're able to answer 10 of them, you're going to be able to take your table a lot farther than where it is now. And you're going to be able to, you know, put narrative questions and narrative challenges in front of your player characters that are simply going to be unmatched at any other table. If you're a dungeon master, watch Black... And you're over the age of 18, watch Blackbird. It's incredible. A uh, little warning, it is terrifying and deep and deeply sad, right? Um, but if, if you're crafting horror stories in Dungeons and Dragons this is the gold source right like you know, this is you know when it comes to interaction you've got to see this thing all that's my opinion I'd love to hear your thoughts let me know in the comments below please consider liking, liking and subscribing take care